Hi, I'm Andrew from Cruise Master, and today I thought we'd give you a walk around post rat run up to Cape York as to what went well and what didn't work quite so well on our recent Land Cruiser 200 build. So let's start at the front and let's get into it. Up the front of the car, we put an off-road animal bar on it. One of the things that we were originally concerned about was the mounting frame for the winch. Typically on the TJM bars, the winch is mounted to a separate winch frame, which is particularly strong. This is mounted to the channel, which has the crush zone in between it. Benefit being a bit lighter, but we were concerned about the strength. However, when we were doing the Frenchman's track, I was towing a 2.8 ton trailer, got myself particularly well stuck and had to winch out. We stalled the carbon winch on a single line pull and we ran a double line pull coming off the recovery points as the secondary point there. Getting up the hill, we did not have any deformation of the bar. It's just as good as new. So those original concerns have been laid to rest and I got utter faith in this bar is gonna be able to handle what we need to throw at it. Lighting was quite interesting. So this is my first car I've had a rooftop light on it and it's a big one, it's a strong one. But we found that particularly on the roads as we were heading up to Cairns, we are using the lights at night that the rooftop light bar produced so much glare off the back of the antenna and off the front section of the bonnet, we actually found that it provided less light because we were getting dazzled by it. So if we switched that off and just ran with the front light bar, we got better vision out of the vehicle. So the next step for us is we're gonna try and make a deflector guard that goes underneath the light bar and see if we can cut out at least a section which reflects off the bonnet, see if we can improve that lighting situation. So it may suggest that more light isn't better, but we'll see how we go and see whether we can fix that. Um, up the front, even though we can't see it, um, when we were traveling through the Frenchman's track and on another occasion, we found that we could get into the situation where the automatic gearbox would get into an overheating stage. So it'd come up with an alert on the dash. It would still allow us to drive, but it wasn't happy that the transmission was getting really hot. So this is when everything was slipping, all the wheels were um, engaged in traction control situations and everything was working quite hard. This thing came up. So I believe that there are a few aftermarket options out there on the market for improvements on the factory transmission caller. So we'll start looking into those and see if we can improve that situation. Heading around the side now, the wrap on this, obviously partly um, cosmetic because of the marketing and the branding that we want on the side of the vehicles. However, we, ha we did find on the Frenchman's track, as we had a trailer behind us, um, often when you're turning tight corners, that you need to swing quite wide to make sure you don't clip the trailer on a tree as you're negotiating the turn. As such, it means that you have to push the car right out into the outside of the corner, in some cases, past the outside of the corner and into the bush to safely negotiate it. And what that means is one corner of the vehicle ends up in the bush and potentially getting scratched. But having the wrap on the car has protected the paint substantially so we don't have more paint damage. So if you're towing a trailer through tight tracks, it might be something you might want to consider, putting some clear PPF on the car or something like that so you can protect your paint. Um, the suspension on the vehicle. This is a J-Max AEV kit with King's shocks and it's got to be the best sorted suspension that I have had on corrugations in the multiple four-wheel drives I've owned. The fact that you could tweak the compression up a bit as you were hitting the whoops on the corrugated roads made it hugely controllable. You could really push the vehicle, which is important for us. We want to safely push the vehicle so we can test our products to the maximum. So I really appreciate how well-tuned this suspension is underneath the car. Um, also in the suspension system, we got some K-On rear shock guards just before we left. They protect the, the rods on the rear shocks from getting stone damage on our travels. As I was coming out of the Pasco Creek on the Frenchman's, I smashed one into a rock and it did quite a bit of damage to it. It's bent it and all that type of thing. However, it's still absolutely usable. Got in there with a, um, with a pry bar, moved it a bit away from the shock body and it lasted the rest of the trip. So even though it's completely mounted, it still performed its function. So really impressed with that product. One of the small concerns I had going into this trip was heading up the Cape 
on a set of tyres I've never used before, these Kenders that we fitted to the 200. They're a pretty aggressive tyre, and as I talked about before, they are a little bit noisy. However, they really held up well to the conditions up north. In particular, coming out of the Pasco, once again, I got stuck, and we had a bit of wheel spin on the rocks coming out of there. And that's generally a pretty aggressive environment. And um, we did get a little bit of chipping out of the tires, a little bit of damage, but I've had very expensive tires that have got far more damaged in far easier conditions. So I'm very impressed with how these things held up. However, coming back, they are definitely noisier than they left. We've got a little bit of uneven wear on them, but they'll hold up for quite a bit longer and then we'll decide what we do moving forwards. Roof rack, the roller Titan tray, Again, lots of gear we had on the top of the 200 with lots of different brackets. You know, really easy, flexible options up there to put lots of gear on the roof um, and access everything very easily. One of the things that we did this time that we haven't done in the past is put recovery gear in a box on the roof. Um, when you get stuck um, in tight conditions with a trailer on the back and you get a draw system, it's very hard to get the gear out. So we moved it all up into the roof and there's no doubt that made life easier. When I got stuck, we could climb up there, get the gear out, not have to worry about not being able to get into the back of the car. That solution worked really well. There's no doubt on the trip to the Cape that this Kmar rear bar paid for itself. As I was heading into the Pasco, um, I slid the back end of the car into a bank and smacked the Kmar bar against it. Unfortunately, it wasn't all on camera, as always the best bits aren't. However, I'm convinced that it saved the back end of this car. It definitely would have made um, massive panel damage to the back of it as well as taking out a tail light. So at the end of the day, I think what this means is if you're gonna be tackling those types of tracks, particularly with the trailer one where it can push you around a bit, this product gives you utter confidence in the ability to be able to handle that without having more damage. All right, so let's head around the back and I'll show you in the back of the car. As we covered in the walk around originally of the 200, I talked about what we did in the back of the vehicle here. Unlike previous builds, I opted for not putting a draw system in because I wanted to manage weight. And in particular, what we found with this setup is the amount of space it gives you. So I had three people in this car, all the camping gear, um, clothes bags, sleeping bags, all that type of stuff. I could stack it on the right hand side still have access to the fridge, access to the air gear, some of the tools and all that type of stuff without having to have a full draw system. I'm absolutely convinced if I had, did have a full draw system in this vehicle, even with a cargo barrier and a fridge divider, I would not have been able to fit all that stuff in. It would have meant everything would have had to go partly in the back and some on the roof as well, which would just been an absolute pain. So really happy with how this layout went. All right, let's head round into the car and I'll show you what um, we particularly liked on the interior of the vehicle. On our rat runs, we're getting in and out of the cars all the time. We're doing that to get the drone in the air for the videos. We're getting underneath the trailers to make sure that the products are all going well and the prototypes are not having any problems. As such, we often drag in a lot of dust and dirt into the vehicles over the two weeks on the road. So, Managing that is really important. In particular, in our vehicles, we have the Superfit seat covers of the denim variety, comfortable to sit on, but also protect the seat underneath from all that dust and grime that we drag in. And floor mats as well, We've got Max Liner ones in these. They really protected the carpet in the vehicles from all that dirt and dust. Really easy to clean out because they overlap the kick panel there. So um, actually on the trip, I did brush it out at one point just to manage it, because otherwise we're gonna drown in dust in the inside of the vehicle. So really appreciate those products. Also, when it comes to ease of use, for the first time, I've got remote control for the winch, and that remote control is actually on the dash. It's not a separate remote, and that was hardwired into the control box by our fitter. When he first suggested it, I thought it might be a bit of a gimmick, but I thought we'd give it a go and see how it worked. But just having that there close to hand really made a big difference when it comes to winching in hard conditions. So that's it for the walk around post rat run on the 200 series. So where to from here? Next thing we're gonna have a look at is an engine reflash and a transmission reflash. We were doing about 24 liters per 100 pretty continuously on the trip. We found that was because the gearbox was hunting quite a bit, trying to find the right gear, whether it's gonna lock up and stuff like that. 
which has greatly improved with those types of modifications. We found in particular at about 110 things would start, the gearbox would start locking in and we'd get into sixth and the fuel consumption would drop. So if we can bring that down a bit, I think over time we'll get far better fuel economy from this vehicle. Also, we're going to have a look at the transmission cooler situation we talked about earlier. And finally, I think the vehicle would really benefit from a couple of diff locks in it. Traction control is good and it works well with the trailer knot on the back, but I did find it did get a bit limited when the tracks got particularly tough and that's where the 100% traction from the diff locks would make a massive difference. So we've got a couple more videos out of our Cruise Master BT50 and the KMR Y62 Patrol that we also took in the rat run. They'll be up on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, so make sure you don't miss out.